While everyone was busy talking about the new Apple products and MetaConnect, Pimax quietly dropped their own keynote video. And I gotta say, it totally caught me off guard. When it comes to Pimax, it's really easy to be skeptical. They have had some missteps in the past. But this video, it actually got me excited about VR again. They're showing us a whole new lens design, a micro OLED headset that's incredibly light, DFR ready eye tracking, and a price on the Dream Air SE that honestly blew me away. Easily the cheapest headset with these kinds of specs. So let's get into it. Pimax has been around for about a decade, making headsets with big specs and wide fields of view. The stereotype has always been that they build hardware for tinkerers, powerful but a bit rough around the edges. This keynote video felt different. It felt less scrappy, it felt more confident, and they spent a lot of time talking about their software investments, manufacturing, and customer support. It seems like they now own multiple factories, including one just for optics, and they named partners like NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS, and iRacing. To me, that reads like a company that's trying to be taken seriously by more than just VR hobbyists. And the software pitch here matters. Pimax Play, which is their PC client, isn't just a launcher. They talked about image sharpening, GPU upscaling, an open XR runtime, quad view foveated rendering you can tune, desktop tools, and their own SLAM tracking pipeline. That's their own version of inside out tracking, is the SLAM tracking. If you have lived through something with amazing specs and mid-tier software, you know exactly why this is important. Hardware is only half the story. So let's talk headsets, starting with the one that surprised me on the price, the Dream Air SE. This is their more affordable micro OLED model, and per eye, the panel resolution is 2560 by 2560. If you've been on LCD headsets like the Quest 2 or the Quest 3, micro OLED is a different look entirely. You get true blacks because the pixels shut off, which drives contrast and cleans up the dark scenes, and response times are faster and colors just pop better. In a lot of circles with VR enthusiasts, they won't even talk about a headset unless it's got OLED screens. The lenses here are another big change. Pimax calls them the concave view pancake lenses. Pancake optics are how you make small headsets possible, but the trade-off has often been field of view and clarity around the edges. Pimax says they iterated for years to get these where they wanted them, and the Dream Air SE is rated at a 105 degree horizontal field of view, which is a solid number for a compact micro OLED headset. They also called out stereo overlap and made a point that they weren't just chasing the wide field of view headline at the expense of comfort. It's a good choice in my opinion, but the way that they framed it kind of feels like shots fired at a different company. The fastest way to make a spec sheet look amazing is to inflate diagonal field of view and forget about overlap. And they say they didn't do that here. Eye tracking is built in and DFR ready, which means that the headset will render full detail only where your eyes are looking. When this works and it's fast and accurate, it feels like a free GPU upgrade. When it's not working, you definitely notice it and you'll see a blurry ring wherever you look. So it really feels like Pimax is positioning this as a ready for real PC VR headset, whether that's just for day-to-day -day use gaming or if it's for flight sims and racing sims. Tracking for this model is either their in-house SLAM system or a lighthouse based system, depending on the package that you pick. SLAM is basically inside out tracking. It means you don't need base stations on your walls. And it'll also enable hand tracking, which looks like something they're still kind of working the bugs out on maybe. So if you want the ability to just throw your headset in a bag and play with your hands in a hotel room or a living room, that's that's a great pitch. Kind of steal a little bit of that thunder away from Meta for once. They also include the integrated spatial audio, which, you know, you'd think, well, of course it has audio, but not all VR headsets at this price point do have audio built in. So that's definitely a plus. And the design of the headset actually uses two cooling fans instead of one so that you can keep each of the display panels cool and run them bright without a bunch of heat building up. It sounds simple, but stuff like fan placement and noise actually matters a lot for comfort and playability, not to mention the lifespan of the screens. And all of this sounds great, but the price is where the Dream Air SE really made me look twice. According to the video, the total price for this headset starts at $899 if you already have Lighthouse gear, or $1199 if you need the SLAM system with the controllers. That's a micro OLED PCVR headset with eye tracking and audio included 
for $8.99. The product page on the website also shows shipping targeted to start December 2025. Dates move a lot in this industry, so I'm not carving that in stone, but that's what they're saying right now. Now let's talk about the flagship model that they showed, the Dream Air. This is the one that they call the world's smallest full-feature 8K VR headset. The per-eye resolution on this jumps to 3840 by 3552 using Sony Micro OLED panels. These are the same types of panels you've heard about in several high-end premium devices, like the Apple Vision Pro. And the lens stack on this is a hybrid of glass and plastic in the same concave view design that you saw on the SE. And they also highlighted that you can get your eyes physically closer to the lens without eyelash issues because of the concave design. Pimax is saying that the headset gets 110 degrees horizontal field of view on the Dream Air. They did play a bunch of first impression reactions in the keynote talking about being able to see sawdust on a table and read small text across a room. That kind of detail is exactly why people want micro OLED with clean optical stacks. And unlike wireless systems that send a compressed video stream, Pimax is routing video over a split display port cable. And they clearly know who their audience is because they're pitching this as visually uncompressed from the PC. Price-wise, the Dream Air sits quite a bit above the SE. They have this headset starting out at $1,999 and going up to $2,299 depending on whether or not you get the Slam system or the Lighthouse version. And these also look like they're slated to ship in December, so right in time for Christmas. But we know from experience that the timing on these sorts of things can slip, so let's just hope that that's the case. There's one more piece that matters for people who are already bought into Pimax, and that's the Crystal Super getting the new micro OLED optical engine. This is not a brand new headset. It's a module that swaps into the existing Crystal Super. Same micro OLED direction, same lens family, but with a little more room inside the housing to push the field of view. Pimax is saying that they can push the Crystal Super to 116 degrees of horizontal field of view on the micro OLED engine, which is great because if you're already on the Crystal Super platform for seated sims or maybe you just use it for daily gaming, this is a really easy way to upgrade. And because the micro OLED engine is lighter than their big QLED options, you're actually going to get more clarity without heavier optics. I liked a few of the less flashy design choices that Pimax called out. They didn't chase the lightest at any costs, and they went with slightly larger fans mounted over each panel so that they can run quieter and and keep brightness up without cooking the screens. They kept the audio integrated so that you're not juggling headphones every time you try to put the headset on. And it sounds like they really spent time on the stereo overlap rather than inflating the field of view in a way that looks good on a chart but feels weird on your face. These are the kinds of choices that are gonna make a headset usable, wearable, and comfortable for hours upon hours, not just impressive on paper. Now I wanna be fair, Pimax still has to deliver. Shipping windows move, software polish is a marathon. There will be early bugs. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know that I'm pretty careful with pre-orders. A lot of things look really good on paper and I've been let down a lot. But I also want to be honest about how this keynote landed for me. I am genuinely excited. Micro OLED at these resolutions with this weight with a clean display port feed and built-in eye tracking at these price points? This is exactly the kind of stuff that I want to see in PC VR. If they can hit the quality bar and keep improving Pimax Play the way that they say they are, these could be the headsets that we have all been waiting for. Pimax finally showed a small form factor headset that looks like it could deliver on both clarity and comfort without throwing out all the practical stuff that makes day-to-day -day use easy. The Dream Air SE's price for the features is strong, the Dream Air's spec sheet is really promising, and the Crystal Super's upgrade path is a smart play for people looking to get into PC VR and upgrade as they go. I am cautiously optimistic, and I'm more excited about trying a new headset than I have been in a very long time. But what do you guys think? Would you consider picking a Pimax over a Meta or an Apple headset at these prices? Why or why not? Tell me in the comments. I am going to dig deeper into these as more details come out, and as soon as I can test them, you're gonna see it here on the channel. If this breakdown was helpful, smash that like button and consider subscribing. And don't forget to enter our gaming PC sweepstakes. I've got a link for you in the description below. But anyway, that's really all I got for you guys today. So we will see you on the next one.